But we are here to play the American dream game. Um, let's actually, should we get our, get our characters up front first, or what do you think? Yeah, sure. Let uh, all our wonderful volunteers who are playing, could you come up to the board game, please? Let's cheer for them, especially with Ooh. those folks with fans. <laughs> all right, awesome. Totally. Come on up and around here in the starting line. This is where we're going to get started. Your gnome <laughs> shoes are awesome. <laughs> So we're, the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to learn as we play this game. But this game usually goes for about two hours or more. We work with companies to train them, think about how to use it as a tool to have conversations around diversity and inclusion. The idea is a circuit training, you're moving, you're thinking about this. We use this in a lot of companies, and it's, been, it's proven very successful. We'll talk about that more as we go along. But we'll start now by just having our actual characters tell us who they are, and their identifiers and what their dr American dream is. What does it mean for them to achieve the American dream? So this will be a moment of learning as we go along. So we're gonna start here with Monet. Yes, hello, I'm Monet. Uh, I am uh, a woman. I am black. I am a US citizen. Uh, my sexual orientation is straight. I am a Christian with an upper income uh, I am currently abled, my native language is English, and my complexion is medium. Excellent. Can you say Monet one more time? Monet. That's awesome. All right, and who's got a Monet <laughs> fan? All right, so if you have, you are part of the Monet fan club. So while our friend here is playing Monet on the board, every time she rolls the die, you're going to be cheering and getting involved and really starting to root for for her to win the game, okay? Did you tell us your American dream, Monet? I know I didn't. Well, part of the reason I'm here as a Brit is that I, I sort of think that the American dream might be a bit of a myth, so I wanted to come and find out for myself. So what does it mean to me? I'm not entirely sure, and I also am interested that it would be different for me than it would be for the rest of my, the participants here. So I, I don't really have a very good answer to okay. what that is. Okay. That's a start, excellent. Thank you. Let's, let's go to uh, Tanya. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I am Tanya. Uh, my gender is I'm a trans woman. I am white, Middle Eastern. I am a, my citizenship is U, United States. My sexual orientation is bisexual. My religion is spiritual. My income range is middle income. I am currently abled, and my native, in, my na native language is English, and my complexion is light. What's your American dream, Tanya? Uh, my American dream is not to be not seen as the less lesser. Okay, that's great. Like Thanks, Tanya. Who's on Team Tanya? Woo! Can I right. get a little woo? Bring it out. Yes. All right. <laughs> Tanya needs your love. She's gonna need you. All right. Jeremy. <laughs> Clarifying question: Is it Jeremy's American dream or my American dream? Jeremy's Where American is? dream. Thank you. Thank you for the question. <laughs> okay. uh, hey, folks. I'm Jeremy. I'm an Asian man, uh, a U.S. citizen, straight, Christian, upper income, currently abled. Native language, native language is English and medium complexion. Who's on team Jeremy? Woo! Yay! Yay, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy's <laughs> American girl. dream is to maintain that upper income echelon, um, have a family with a house and a white picket fence and 2.5 kids. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah? Nice. Cool. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Hola, my name is Isabella. I am a woman, I am Latina. My citizenship is Mexican. I am straight, Catholic. My income range is low income. I am currently abled. My native language is Spanish, and my complexion is medium. My American dream is to find a stable job, find a place to live, find a boyfriend, and uh, live ever happily ever after. All right. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Who's on team, Isabella? <gasps> <laughs> We need to get somebody else on Team Isabella. She's going to need needs some fans, please. Isabella so someone's going to have to cheer her on. It. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, my name is Martha. I'm a woman. I'm biracial, white, and native. My citizenship is US, sexual orientation straight. Christian is religion. Income is low income. Ability status, diabetic. Native language, English, and complexion, medium. And my American dream would be to get ahead and um, change the low income and uh, um, achieve success. Awesome. All right, Team Martha. 
Yay. Okay, thank you. Oh, we have a lot of our Martha. Oh, we got a we lot We need to swap out a Martha right. for Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> At least two of those Marthas have got to be Isabella. Okay, we'll switch that out. All right, let's see. Perfect. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark. Uh, I am a man biracial, um, black and white, citizen, citizen status as a U.S. citizen, uh, identify as gay, atheist, come from a low income range. Um, as far as ability status, I use a wheelchair. Uh, native language is English, and I have a medium complexion. Uh, Mark's or my American dream would be not to let income determinations or ability status hold them back. Okay. Thanks, Mark. And Team Mark? Yay! All right. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alex. I am a man. I'm white. My citizenship is a United States citizen. Sexual orientation is straight, religion, Christian. Income range, upper income, ability status, currently abled, native language, English, complexion, light. Alex's American dream is to continue to maintain high income status. I would say white picket fence, three children or more, and yeah, pretty much, exactly. And then continue to move up the corporate ladder to like a VP or C-level exec kind of role. Awesome, all right, team Alex. All right, okay, thanks. Trans oh, last one. Bring something. Okay, so I'm a Muslim Arab, Arab American man. I'm a, a US citizen and straight. I have a middle income and currently abled. My native language is English. Uh, complexion is medium and my American dream is around opportunity to, to make a lot of money. Awesome. Excellent, beautiful. Right. And who's on Team Trent? All right, you have Small but mighty crew here too, okay. Excellent. So thanks everyone for doing that and for all of your participation. Really quick, just to set a little bit of context, we are Point Made Learning. You can find us on Instagram here. And we are a company that works with documentary films as our starting point, and then we take those films and we take them across the country to lead discussions about race, racism, and identity, and really how it impacts everybody. So we had a film called I'm Not Racist, Am I?, which is a documentary that followed a group of teens through a year-long exploration of race and racism, and they did a series of workshops and this was one of the workshops. And so we've been showing the film for about six years now, leading discussions on race and racism. And every time we show the film, people would say, how can we play that game? So we worked to update it, create it, have this life-size version. We use it for talent development and leadership development and onboarding in companies and trust building and things like that in schools, corporations, communities across the country. And it's basically the game of life meets shoots and ladders, as you can see here. And we're going to really talk about this idea of opportunity. And if it's a fantasy, or fake, or um, if it's something that is actually attainable. And so these characters are going to be start to move through the game, and you'll be cheering them on, and we're going to really have discussions about some of these everyday scenarios that are going to come up, and you'll see that as we play the game. There are things that happen in our everyday lives that uh, affect us based on our identity, whether we're talking about individual interactions and blind spots people may have, and also just long-term chances for success. So that's what this is about today. And um, we're really gonna get, just jump in. And I have the order already written out for how we're gonna start playing so we can jump in. First, before I start, are there any questions about any of the categories that we used or the labels or the ways that people have been described as their characters? Okay. All right, great. And if you have questions along the way, let us know because this is really about what we make of it. So the game gets stronger the more we participate and really jump in to explore this stuff. So you'll see what's gonna happen in a moment. We're gonna have chance cards that are going to start to affect how the players move. And along the way, dialogue is everything. So we'll do a little bit of small group discussions and also with the players. So, we ready to go? Okay. Uh, our first is Isabella. So, Team Isabella, do we have a cheering section? Yay, Isabella. thank you. <laughs> big money, big money, no right. whammies. Big money, big money, no whammies. Four. Okay. So you're going to come forward four spaces. One, two, three, four. Great. And now the okay. magic happens. You get a chance card. Okay. I'll read it for everyone. Your current health insurance coverage drops prescription medications. You can't afford to move up a tier in coverage. So individuals in need of medication, which you'll want to check your character card, move back one space. And also if you are lower or middle income, move back one space. 
Now, on the chance card, these apply to all the players. So Every all of you, even if you haven't rolled yet, you are going to... That's right. Exactly. So yes. if you start, you're going to the <laughs> So we all spot. start at the same place. Um, now, everyone, this makes sense. Okay. So these are all good things. These are really designed to help us start thinking about how our policies and things like that will affect people. Right. Martha, tell us why you moved back. Martha. Martha. Yes. Martha. Why'd you move back? <laughs> because I am diabetic and low income. Okay. okay. Yes. So Martha is going to not be able to be served here. And then Mark also moved back. Okay. All right, next up is, and what was that number that we rolled the first Four. One? Four, okay. Alex is next. Go, Alex. <laughs> we can cheer for Alex, too. <laughs> one, okay. Oh, uh, okay, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. All right, you get a chance card. <laughs> All right, your chance card, Alex, is during drinks at the company retreat, someone accidentally outs in front of an executive. You've never told anyone your sexual orientation. So individuals who are not heterosexual move back one space. Uh-oh, who moved back? Mark. Mark, why'd you move back, Mark? Well, I was already down because of my ability status and my income status, and I also identify as gay. And so where are you now relative to the start? negative three. Oof. Yes, and you have not even rolled yet, okay? Yeah. All right? Okay, Tanya's next. All right, let's go Tanya. Team Tanya. Oh, oh, oh. There you go, good catch. <laughs> good roll. Oh, no. oh yay, yes. six. All right, that is good. Our strongest so, roll yet. One, two, start does not count as one. There you go. Three, four, five, six. six. You're at four. All right, you're okay. at four. Brainstorming session, you make an innovative su suggestion that basically gets ignored. A little later in the meeting, a male colleague makes the exact same suggestion and everyone thinks it's the best idea ever. All right, all men move ahead one space. All women move back one space. We have a, we have a question. Oh, okay. Question from Tanya. Question. Uh, start at one. Start at one, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I just, right. I just don't know, actually. Um, I am a trans woman, so would that? Yes, so what does Tanya do, whose uh, gender identity is trans woman in this situation, do? Move back, Move back one. Does anyone want to talk a little bit about why you would say that? She identifies as a woman. She identifies as a woman. She's a trans woman. And she would be That's right. treated as such as a woman versus a man, so she would move back one. That's not right. Treated yeah, as such sense? versus so, a man, so she'd move back one. Yeah, because there's also there's how we identify, and then there's also how the world treats us. And in this case, she's presenting as a woman. She identifies as a woman, and so she probably in this situation, I think, might it might resonate with her. And before you go, does uh, does everyone in the room agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She identifies as yeah. a woman. Yeah. Could it be one step forward, one step back? No. You don't agree with the move back? Why don't you agree with the move? Well, let's let's hear this. Why don't you agree with the move back? Okay. Well, in, in, like, in principle, I don't agree with the, oh, sorry, I'm normally loud in life, so in principle, I don't agree with women having to take the step back, like, I understand how she identifies, but in principle, moving back because you're a woman, no, yeah, yeah, so, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, thanks for asking the question. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. All right, uh, up next is Monet. Oh wait, and actually we have a few people on a stop sign here. So Isabella is on a stop sign. Can you, Alex, would you mind shifting so we can read what actually, it says here? No, I'm <laughs> exactly, I'm right here. Ooh. Visa, violation. Visa violation, not a US citizen, lose two turns during your immigration hearing. Okay, so wah, wah. is Isabella a US citizen? No. All right, so Isabella loses two turns. I'm gonna keep track of it here. So we're going to skip you a couple times. And, and Alex is also on that same stop sign. Right. Alex is a U.S. citizen. Oh, no. What happened here? And here's the deal with the board. If you, the character who is landing on the stop sign, it only applies to no. you. Um, so everybody else doesn't move on that one. Everyone moves on chance cards as soon as we get them back up. All right. Monet's turn. Team Monet. Monet. No, a two. it was off. Okay. I'm not sure what that All was. Right. All right, so we've got two, and you have a chance card. Ouch, you cut your finger on a staple right before an interview for a promotion. There's only time to get a Band-Aid from the office first aid kit. People of color move back one space. Does this make sense to everyone? 
No, tell me, tell me why it doesn't make, what you, you're thinking, what are you thinking? Why do people of color have to move back one space? Thanks for your question. Because Band-Aids only come in one color. Say it again. Band-Aids, Band-Aids, Band hello, can you hear me? Band-Aids only come in one color. Not anymore, though. Not anymore. Does everyone's office first aid kit have all the skin tones? No. Let's, let's hear this question. Why is a Band-Aid that's different than your skin tone a problem? Great question. So why is a Band-Aid that's a different skin tone a problem? We have a hand up over here. Thank you for asking that. Because folks who wear Band-Aids who are of fair skin complexions have the luxury of hiding it. Um, so if I were to wear a Band-Aid, say, on my shoulder and I'm wearing a strapless dress or something, it's very noticeable versus someone who may have the same complexion as a Band-Aid can easily hide it. Sort of further point behind it, though, is the world is not set up for you as a person of colour. It is made for pale complexion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those band-aids are often called flesh tone. They're not, excuse me, they're not anymore because we have seen changes because folks have protested. But if you look at this whole question, you know, this person is getting ready for an interview. You want to be relaxed and prepared and as calm as possible and confident. You don't want to walk in worried about having something that feels out abnormal. Also, the stress of that moment of like, why am I thinking about this issue of a band-aid as opposed to just moving through life? Make sense to folks? Mm -hmm. okay. And what I'll say, I'll take a little commercial break and say, we are going very fast with this game. Usually it's a two hour process. We go a little bit slow, we turn and talk to one another, but we're trying to give you like, just basically a commercial version of this. Just so you, so you know, it's not usually this fast. Yeah, okay. and I'll, I'll add too, just with the Band-Aid one, that um, this one sometimes generates the most discussion when yeah. we do this workshop um, because of the questions that we've heard here, right? And it, it's just, it's good to talk about it because I think sometimes a kind of an aha moment happens for people and, and that it's not really just about a Band-Aid. Uh, Claude Steele, um, who wrote a book called Whistling Vivaldi, if people are familiar with it, talks about stereotype threat. So there's a moment where if you're going into an interview and you're yet again reminded for what may be the 20th time that day that you don't really belong in this place and everything isn't really even set up for you, um, it can actually be detrimental to your performance. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks for those questions, everyone. Yeah. Um, okay, Mark is next. Team Mark, yes, thank you. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can get on the board. Yes. <laughs> Four. You're in nice. the game of life. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Where are our marks at? Okay, next one. Okay, in the hotel elevator at the annual retreat, a manager confuses you for the only other employee who is your same race and sex. This is the third time he's done this. All people of color move one space back. Sorry, Mark. Okay. <laughs> Does this card, you, you, we're gonna actually have mercy on <laughs> you and you're gonna stay at negative four. Yeah. Um, Martha. We have to at least have you stop there. Yeah. Um, does the, also, if these cards resonate with folks or anything like that, you can jump in as well. So confusing. So, yeah. So this happens, right? This happens all the time. Yeah. And we'll say that these cards, these are not just anecdotal cards that we made up. We've been along. They've been researched. We have professionals who review them and talk about them with us. When we go to different companies, we actually get new cards from companies that are based on real moments and experiences. So it's not just our opinions up here. This is, these are real life uh, incidents that we're documenting and presenting. Okay, um, next up is Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. Go, Jeremy. Yay. I know you have a cheering section. <laughs> Yay, Jeremy. Section. You need like a six or something. Yeah. You totally need a six. Oh, oh <laughs> gosh, all right. So I think I was negative one. Start. So you're, you're <laughs> Welcome to the game. All right. I hope we're gonna try and make it happen. We wanna get you at least out of that, that negatives. The annual staff retreat has been scheduled during the month of Ramadan, so if you're Muslim, move back one. Right here. Oh, Trent, okay, all right, Trent's uh, moving back. I'm so sorry, that's pretty clear, I think. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Trent. Oh, perfect. You need to go, yes. Right. <laughs> Let's see if we can get that back. Big money, big money, no whammies. Yeah! Yay, Trent. all right, six, awesome. Play. Two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. Okay, all right, here we call. go, five. Cross your fingers. Taking the lead. You take a new position on a team with a lot of fun people and you're trying to make connections with them. Everyone talks quickly 
and they crack a lot of jokes. Non-native English speakers move back one space. Sorry, Isabella. So that's Isabella. OK, who's next? Uh, next is Martha. Martha, where are you? Oh, Martha. Team Martha. Negative. Let's get yeah. Martha out of the negatives. Six, 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 four. OK. Yeah, All right, back, back to, to start. <laughs> OK. All right, work it start out. start somewhere. All right. That happens in life. A member of your team has had to leave his position abruptly in the middle of a big project, and com company leadership wants to replace him right away. You suggest reaching out to a diverse slate of candidates, which prompts one of your colleagues to say, we don't have time for that. This is too important, and we can't sacrifice skills and experience. So these directions compound. So white men all move ahead one space. So it's Alex right now. White women remain in place. All non-white individuals move back one space. So does this sound familiar? Has anyone had conversations like this? Yeah. Do you want to say a little bit more about that? Like there's an assumption being made. Oh. Do you want to speak? Okay. You have to hand up. I just, I've experienced it. You've experienced it? Yeah. Personally. OK. Just having that conversation. I know the argument around high growth mode, and I don't have time to train this person. So the word culture fit gets thrown around a lot, and that is overgeneralized to mean I want someone who looks like me, who went to the same school as me, who has the same experiences as me, and not recognizing that there are barriers to employment that not everyone is gonna look the same on paper and present the same way and is not a determinant for success, but they try and figure that out by what's on paper. So I deal with that a lot. Mm. Yeah. I've had a little bit of a different slant. I've had managers who are like, yeah, let's bring in the diverse candidates, you get them into the pipeline, and then you see all the diverse candidates are cut from the you know, first round of interviews, and then they come mm. back, it's a culture fit which means absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. So they say they're on board, but when you dig deeper, you find other issues. Mm. Good question. I mean, good response, rather. Mm -hmm. Good answers. Yeah, I mean, has anyone had any success in sort of interrupting this, right? Because there's sort of the, in the moment, there's two things that can happen with this card, right? In the moment, there's what do you say to somebody when they say something like that to you, right? There's that individual interaction that needs to be addressed, and then, what kind of policies and practices can an organization mm -hmm. put in place to just try and even have that entire process interrupted in that way? So we've started a practice when we're looking at the different job uh, categories and where diversity is lacking and we've decided to go to an RPO model and candidate admits the criteria, here's your employee. Mm. Nice. So, okay. and it's working. Great. Yeah, ooh, we like things that work. Yes. Excellent, <laughs> yes. I mean, we've had the issue even where uh, I'll say non-white individuals haven't had even the chance to apply for when the situation could happen. So what we're trying to introduce to interrupt this moment is to just post our jobs and have a small waiting period for internals to actually raise their hand before doing the good people's work that you list on the screen. Mm. Um, but definitely the need for speed is always the case when things like this come up. And what I do appreciate, I've been questioning the rolling of the dice aspect of this mm -hmm. um, because it can seem random, and, and but yet this is a very rolling of the dice situation. No one can predict when someone's gonna walk off the job or, and resign, and that is when certain individuals do get that tap on the shoulder to take the step forward that only comes through access and exposure, so. Right, yeah, That's excellent. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Hi, um, if anyone ever says that quote to you about sacrificing skills and experiences, I would challenge you to ask them what they mean just so uh, they out themselves and they can hear what they're saying out loud doesn't actually make sense. Um, at my company, I'm at a tech company in New York City, so lots of schools, lots of diverse talent. Um, some of the departments within my company, for example, data science, uh, we practice the Rooney Rule, which means you're not allowed to hire anyone unless you've identified three diverse candidates from uh, various underrepresented groups. Um, so if you have a white male come in to an on-site interview, you have to wait to make a hiring decision until you've uh, kind of checked off those boxes and seen a wide range of candidates. Um, we've had to reject people early on in the process because the teams are 
really passionate about trying to meet the Rooney Rule. I would, if you don't know what it is, I would Google it and figure it out. And also it's a great way to at least pilot it across one team to see how it works. But um, it has its drawbacks. Obviously you have your timelines for the hiring process, but it really helps um, rally the troops. Can you say the name of it one more time? The which rule? Rooney. 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 It's a fo Excellent. football practice. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Excellent. great. All right, let's go try and get through one more round of the game. Thanks yeah. for all that discussion and participation um, and helpful stuff. Excellent. So Isabella would be next, but you've lost a turn. So now Alex <laughs> is going to roll again. Sorry, yes. Isabella. Go, Alex. Go, Alex. Life is hard for you. I wish you well. <laughs> Another one. Gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're at four? Okay, all right, your chance card. For everyone, you're in a junior level position within the company and looking for a mentor to provide you with advice about which skills you should develop to advance your career. White individuals move ahead one space. All non-white individuals move back one space. Now, of course, these are generalizations, right? Um, but we found that in a lot of companies, when there are not formal mentorship programs in place, then people just start to kind of mentor someone who looks like them. And if everybody in leadership is still maybe a white person, or a white man, they might still be kind of like taking someone under their wing who mm -hmm. reminds them of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we've seen groups do that. Um, okay, next is Tanya. That's me. All right. With my fans. Woo! Well, yay! <laughs> Here you go. Big roll, Tanya. Come on. <laughs> four. All right, okay. that's good. Two, three, four. four. All right, okay. moving ahead. Okay. All right, you're fairly new to your team and agree to go out for drinks with teammates during a work week to get to know them better. After a couple of beers, one of your coworkers asks if you can do kung fu. Oof. Asian individuals move back one space. Sorry, Got Jeremy, Jeremy. there. That's Again, Jeremy. these are real life stories. Yeah. Okay, next is Monet. Go Monet. Perfect. Anyone, anyone cheering for Monet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What? Oh, gosh. Maybe they are weighted these days. Yes, <laughs> this is rough, yeah. <laughs> All right, chance card. You're often asked to plan office parties, even though it's not one of your job responsibilities. Women move back one space. Women of color, two spaces. I heard it. Oh, I hate this. What, why do you hate this? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I think there's a assumption um, that women are organized and social and want to do this um, and have the time to do it. And I know we assigned a white male intern to doing this one time and he sulked about it and complained about it and this isn't my job and it was, it was oh, it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad, right? Like we deal with this all the time and have to grin and bear it. So it's tough. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it also takes away from your work, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, um, all right, up next is Mark. Where's Mark? Where did Mark, Mark where are you? Oh, my God. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Big roll. Mark's Come on, let's go, Mark. Team Mark. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, it was almost two. six. One, two. Back at okay. start. All right, back at start. Here we go. All right, invitation goes out to all employees for a team building outing. Uh, the activity is going to be laser tag. So if you're not able-bodied, move back one. Sorry, Mark. Sorry. Uh, all right, okay. Okay, good. Um, okay, Jeremy's next. Let's go, Jeremy. Let's see. <laughs> okay, Jeremy. If your competitors don't um, object, then I guess we just go. I know, right? <laughs> all right, six for Jeremy for the lead. You've been hanging out with Alex. Yeah, I guess everybody could do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've heard that the company you've been hoping to get a position with prefers to hire candidates who have been referred by current employees. High income, move one space ahead if you're high income. If you're white, move another space ahead. If you're lower income and or a person of color, move one space back. Okay. All right, so again, this is kind of the same thing as with the mentorship and the skills and experience and all that, that you know these are things. One or the other. Yeah. So like Martha moves back on that one. Okay, all right, um, and Jeremy rolled a, rolled a six. All right, Trent is next. <laughs> Tanya, where are you? All right, Trent. Tanya. No, no, it's Trent. Trent, my bad, Trent. I'll just yeah. Tanya. Here we go. All right. all right, big roll, five, oh, okay. Not bad, not bad. All right, here we go. Okay, great. Tie with Alex. Tie all right, you've been asked to join the engineering team that's developing a new product and you're excited about it. You want to help build it. During the planning meeting, the team lead assigns you the role of project manager. Your other two colleagues on the team who are both men will fill engineering roles. 
Men move ahead one space, women move back one space. Um, on so you'll stay there. Just stay. Four, yeah. So this happens a lot too, where even we hear a lot from women engineers who actually want to have those leadership, like they want to actually do engineering roles on a team, but they are seen as the project manager, again, kind of the organizational one. Anybody so. challenge that? Or I see some faces kind of trying to figure it out. Everybody get that? Yes. Any thoughts on that from the audience? Okay. All right, okay. next is Martha. Where are you? Go, Martha. Who's team Martha? All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice roll. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, two. <laughs> All right. The du yeah. All right. Let's see that chance card. Okay, you found your dream house. Apply for a home mortgage. So high income whites move ahead one space. Is that Alex? Okay. All right. So what time are we? Where are we? We're at 406. Okay, so we are gonna pause here for a moment. We usually, as Andre said, play for about two hours and we have we switch people in and out of the game, have a lot more conversation. But for now, let's pause for a second and just see where everyone is. We're still pretty clustered. Um, but I'm just gonna let you know what everyone rolled, because um, this could be interesting. So uh, we have a couple of front runners here, Trent and Alex. And um, Trent, you rolled 11. Um, so you are not nearly as up there, but you're close, right? Um, Alex rolled a two and is right up there with Trent. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and then, I mean, gosh, yeah. Monet, you rolled a three. You're way back there. Um, Tanya rolled 10. Where's Tanya? Where's Tanya? A seven? Okay. okay. Um, so actually, Trent, you did roll the most. So 11. So you have this. So we have sort of a pattern that's starting to emerge that we tend to see. Um, I know we've only played for a short time, but are there things that occurred to you, any of the players playing your character that maybe surprised you or an aha moment or maybe just validated what you thought was going to happen? Anyone want to jump in? What it felt like playing knows. your character? Um, it validated what I thought was going to happen because unfortunately um, people of color or people who have you know, other identifiers outside of being a white male don't necessarily get the opportunity. Um, and I didn't really need an opportunity to advance. I just rolled two, and based on the cards, I was able to get ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyone surprised by anything? Okay. I was just gonna say, yeah. um, being Isabel, I've only rolled once, um, and I feel like I started off really strong, and then I, as I slowly started moving back, it was definitely a blow to her confidence, our confidence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Monet, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. how you feel? Well, I'm not entirely convinced that the American dream is not a myth. Uh, it seems <laughs> as though the dice or the board are kind of stacked against you if you are a black woman uh, in the US, and that doesn't seem quite right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Martha, how would help you? How do you feel, Martha? I would, I would echo the same. I would, I would echo the same. I mean, the, yeah, I think the low end is a, is a big step back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Um, how about anybody observing and cheering? Did anything stand out to you that you hadn't thought about before that surprised you about where the characters ended up? I immediately could pick up that he, he couldn't identify, and, and this is not personal, by the way. I, I'm just thinking in terms of when we have privilege, we can see the other person suffering or going through, because I immediately thought, but that's a band, oh wait, of course, yes, <laughs> you're going on an interview for promotion, and you have to think about this, it decreases your mental state. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, if you have never have to think about anything as small as a Band-Aid matching your skin color, you don't even know that that is a moment of, whoa. Um, and so that comes with privilege and all the other things that, of course, if you haven't been on that seat, you don't know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This is an education here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. We have one comment Thanks behind you. Thank oh, you. When thinking about privilege, I found it really helpful. Uh, someone used a mosquito example as mm. if you're a straight, white, able-bodied man, you never get bitten by mosquitoes. And if you get bitten once or twice, it's no big issue. But if you are a person of color with a disability, who is queer, whatever, 
you're getting bitten by mosquitoes all the time and those tiny little irritations build up. And I just found that a really helpful kind of way to think about privilege and mm -hmm. why it is so hard to see mm -hmm. um, when you have it. Mm -hmm. That notion of accumulated impact yeah. uh, can, be, can wear you down. Yeah, that's helpful, thank you. Anyone else? And you know, so with the game, there's, um, as we often start to see things shaking out, we tend to have a pattern that shows where Alex is sort of breaking from the group that's clustered here. And then sometimes Jeremy or Zev, we have 12 total characters that can play and we just chose eight today. But we start to see things that really we can make connections to how this actually might be for folks in everyday life. And with all of these things, the chance cards, a lot of times they're really, really focused on those individual interactions that we have. I mean, this one is more systemic with a home mortgage, but some of these cards were getting confused for a colleague who's the same race and sex. Um, for example, uh, we have cards that are, you know, where people are sort of ignoring you in a meeting and things like that, feel like microaggressions, stereotypes, things like that. And then the board really looks at a lot of things that are more structural. And every time any of these things happen, there's in the moment, like we had a great example here of like, if someone says we can't sacrifice skills and experience, then here's what you say in the moment, and then what policies can we start enacting in the workplace so that we're not missing those things, and so that can't, people start to become more aware, because um, we know that we're not gonna keep diverse talent if we don't have inclusion in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really want the game to start getting people thinking about that. Like how can we make our environment inclusive? And even if it feels so simple as a Band-Aid, that's huge because the Band-Aid might be the 10th thing that happened that day to that person that reminded them that they don't belong in that environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the game, we've been using the game a lot in, in various companies. I actually got the permission from one company to announce and share with you that is using it and it's been with Walmart. We've been talking to them for over a couple of years, and what they've done is they've taken the game, the game in, and they've played it with folks who work on the floor, and they've played it with folks who are executives of the company. And the idea is, as opposed to us coming, giving folks a lecture about implicit biases, et cetera, we bring folks into a space where they have a challenging moment, because that Band-Aid moment is an intense one. We've been places where that talk has lasted for 20, 25 minutes, where folks are like, I just don't get this, it doesn't make any sense to me. And we encourage and support and facilitate that, that dialogue amongst people. The idea is, what does it mean to think about walking in someone else's shoes? How can you have that experience for a moment? We've seen people afterwards go, wow, someone playing Isabella being like, this is not fair. I don't like how this feels. And they're watching characters move forward. They're missing their turns. And what we really work to is to facilitate a dialogue during the game. We have some worksheets that we offer afterwards that are for um, th uh, ways to think about a actual action at the company. We take the board game and the, some of the, the uh, spaces on there are blank. And we ask people to write in, in their company, where are the stop signs? Where are the, the corporate ladders that happen? Where are the moments that are within your company to engage in a dialogue? We also work with the chance cards, which you can get, yeah. um, where we ask people to think about redefining the chance card so everyone moves forward and no one moves back. That's an exercise we'll do afterwards and jump in here. And it's, we're in a couple other large companies and it's, it's just really, it's really exciting. I, I love to tell this story. When Catherine froze, we were making the film, we needed another scene with the kids doing something. And Catherine said, I know a friend who knows a friend who has this American dream game. And I was like, that'll never work. Um, <laughs> tried to mansplain it to her. And she didn't listen. And luckily, here we are today. And it's still working and a great tool that we find very effective as a great way to onboard people and to actually have further conversation as you go along. It's just the idea of how to bring folks into a space and use what we call edutainment. You know, it, it's, a, it's a gentler conversation with some of these ideas. And folks walk in. And it can be, and it's, it's fun and it's also um, informative at the same time. And so we, because we had such a short amount of time today, but we want you to have yeah. a chance to think through these things. So think through your own organization or community where you're going back to and think through maybe what are the stop signs, the green lights, those obstacles, those everyday interactions that might apply to your organization. So we have the worksheets that we'll send to you if you want to just um, text American Dream all one word, doesn't matter if you use uppercase, lowercase, anything, and we'll send you a PDF that has these worksheets, and um, you can fill them out, you can show them to folks that you work with uh, as a way to start conversations and think through like, okay, what have we maybe been missing, or what do we know is an issue, and we now we know it's time to actually have a conversation about how we wanna improve that. 